Hey, Fireworks Brigade listeners, this is Ron the Banker. Johnny Starr's not with me. He's over the water doing what he does out in China. Um, but I wanted to get this to you. As you guys know, the CPSC is contemplating some uh, rule changes that could dramatically affect consumer fireworks. And uh, there was a lot of talk about that at NFA back early September. And with the help of Nancy Blogen, John and I uh, spoke to Spencer Elk. Now, Spencer is the outside counsel to the NFA. So, and if you don't know, there was a meeting, a CPSC meeting uh, in, I want to say, late September, and uh, they basically kicked the can down the road. They tabled the discussion. They wanted to get some more information. But we spoke to Spencer Elg. Again, he's the outside counsel of the NFA, and he gave us a scoop, told us what exactly happened, what's going on, and what we can do to, uh, to, to help the cause. So uh, hashtag Save Our Fireworks. You'll hear that a lot in this interview. And also, if you want to hear the interview more fully, go to our uh, website, fireworksbrigade.com, or we're also available on iTunes, Spotify, and uh, Android um, podcast uh, services as well. So you can catch this anywhere. This is a a shorter version. This is the whole interview, but if you want to hear Johnny's take on it, and and we talk about it a little beforehand and stuff, you can certainly go to our podcast and and listen to that and get a little bit more flavor for it. But this is a the stripped down version. This is Spencer Elg, outside counsel to the NFA, talking about the uh, contemplated CPSC rule changes and everything that's going on. This is up to the minute, um, up to the minute stuff. So uh, we appreciate everybody listening. Uh, we appreciate Nancy Blogen of the NFA helping us uh, put this all together. And uh, please keep it coming. If you got any questions for Spencer, uh, sh- certainly shoot them over to us at um, at uh, fireworksbrigade at gmail dot com, and we can. Uh, on a subsequent episodes, we can ask Spencer, and we can uh, hopefully answer all your questions. So without any further ado, outside counsel to the NFA, Spencer Elg. We appreciate you taking the time to help us and our listeners understand what's happened since NFA. But I guess to start off, you can briefly explain, in case our listeners aren't that well-versed, what the CPSC proposed rule changes are. Sure. So basically what we're looking at is the most sweeping, comprehensive changes to consumer fireworks regulations that we've seen in over the past 50 years. There are a number of new proposed definitions. There are new banned hazardous substances. There are changes to the exemptions. There's changes to other regulations, including fuses, bases, and regulations for burnout and blowout. But of all of these changes that EPSC has proposed, the most alarming to the National Fireworks Association is a proposed ban on powdered metals in the burst charges of aerial fireworks. So everyone that's uh, familiar with aerial fireworks knows that you light them off, the lift charge sends them up in the air, and then after a couple seconds, you get that nice break or that nice burst when they're up in the air. And the reason you get that nice break or you get that nice burst is because the powder that's in there has enough energetics to break apart the shell, to ignite the stars, to disperse the fragments, and basically make sure that that firework is properly functioning in a safe and an efficient manner. What CPSC wants to do is they want to put a rule in place that eliminates the use of any powdered metal in those burst charges. And without getting too technical, long story short, it's going to make those burst charges a lot less dramatic. They're not going to be as efficient in breaking apart the shells and igniting the stars. And perhaps most concerning is that because the proposed rule sets a limit of zero powdered metals. Any powdered metal that may work their way into that first charge, whether it's falling off the stars, whether it's contamination at the point of manufacturing, or whether it's some small amount of powdered metals that are in the powder um, that may or may not even affect it, just on the presence of that powder alone, CPSC can sell that product, it can confiscate the product, it can require destruction of the product. And so that's what a lot of these, uh, a lot of our business owners in our organization are afraid of, 
is this very stringent rule without any safety justification that can easily put someone out of business if their product gets tested and, and fails this very stringent testing procedure. So, I mean, as a, as a business owner in the fireworks industry uh, and anyone else out there, we know just how much, um, you know, how much it costs to destroy fireworks. It's sometimes, in most cases, it costs more to destroy them than it was to build them in the first place. And uh, without CPSC allowing us to send them back to China, which was one of my um, deals years ago, I said, well, let me just send it back because if we don't send it back, then they're going to keep sending us stuff that shouldn't be here. And, uh, of course, they didn't agree with me and they still wanted it destroyed. But, you know, the cost of destruction is a lot of money. And if, you know, anyone who's ever been to China, the contamination in these factories, they're not factories like Abbott Labs. They're, they're just, you know, brick buildings and a lot of workers and a lot of powder from all different things that are going on out there. So um, the zero tolerance level in metals would be, I, I think, really honestly unheard of in the present day factories in China that I see. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that CPSC points to is that um, some importers of fireworks obtain EX numbers, basically they obtain their permission from DOT to ship fireworks by certifying to some voluntary industry standards that say you can't have metals in, in your burst charges. Now, some folks decide to do that and they certify to that, some folks don't. Some folks have invested a lot of money in obtaining approval from DOT to ship fireworks with the metals in the burst charge specifically for that reason that you mentioned, which is it can be very hard to manufacture these fireworks without any metals at all. Yes. And so this, this proposed rule for those companies that have spent the time and money to do the testing, to get their fireworks approved for shipment, they would basically lose all the investment that they've done. So, and then when we were at the NFA and there was that session upstairs and there was a lot of passionate people, um, you know, uh, voicing their opinions and obviously everybody is very concerned so and I know there's like an hour and a half video on YouTube which shows the CPSC meeting and they went through a lot of things and there was a lot of good points brought up so I guess um, what was the uh, what was the outcome at, at the CPSC meeting late last month well what happened at that meeting is the staff that means your uh, rank and file CPSC staff members, the the scientists, the econ the economists, the policy advisors, those people that actually put pen to paper and write these rules. What they did at that meeting is they presented their proposed rule to the commissioners, and the commissioners are the folks that are kind of at the top of the CPSC who get a vote on whether or not one of these proposals becomes a rule. So the staff presented its proposal to the commissioners, and the commissioners expressed a lot of concern about the proposal. One of the concerns they had, being that their focus is on consumer safety, is whether there was really any data to suggest that this rule would have any impact whatsoever on consumer safety. And the staff were unable to point to any data suggesting that this massive override of the regulations would have any impact whatsoever on consumer safety. Right. And so that's a point that NFA has made all along, is there's no data to, to back this up, and it's a point that the commission seemed to, to also acknowledge during that, that hearing. So did they essentially kick the can down the road on this thing? Exactly. Basically, the, the commissioner said that they wanted to take a little bit of a pause to look a little bit more at the data to have staff address some of their questions. And then we anticipate that in a short order, a month or two, this will be back in front of the commission again, and they're going to have to decide whether or not they're going to approve this rule, modify it, or quash it in its entirety. Um, so that's where things stand right now is you've got a proposal. It's sitting with the CPSB commissioners. They've given it back to staff to take another look at. But we do anticipate that commissioners will be 
deciding whether or not to take action on it or modify it here in the upcoming month or so. There's no firm date on that yet? No firm date as of as of right now. Okay, and what can we and our listeners do to help the cause? I know they mentioned several times that they it felt like they were inundated with uh, NFA, uh, you know, emails and things like that. Should we just uh, inform everybody to keep doing the same thing and keep speaking up for our fireworks? Uh, that's that's very important to do. One of the things that's striking about this proposal is this proposal started in 2016 when it was first proposed. Since 2016, there have been thousands and thousands of comments filed by consumers, customers who just love fireworks, by businesses, by the trade organization, the National Fireworks Association, by manufacturers, everybody up and down uh, the, the supply chain and the distribution chain and the retail chain have fired comments. 99% of those comments have been opposed to the rule, have pointed out a number of defects with the rule, have offered proposals for the rule. And this staff proposal that was submitted to the commission last uh, two weeks ago, after about two years of comments, didn't incorporate, acknowledge any of those comments other than in the rebuttals. None of the suggestions were, were worked into the final rule. None of the suggestions were um, manifested in any changes or revisions to the rule. It was basically the exact same proposal that was made two years ago. So it's absolutely critical that NFA continue and its members and anyone really who, who loves consumer aerial fireworks and wants to make sure that they remain available it's critical that they stay involved, that they reach out to the commissioner's offices, tell them that they're opposed to this rule, and they can also go online and join NFA's pe petition by searching for hashtag Save Our Fireworks. You can just plug it into Google, hashtag Save Our Fireworks. NFA has a petition online where you can get more information, you can make a contribution if, if you want, and then there's also more information about how you can uh, stay um, stay involved and stay apprised of the potential rule change. Yeah. Uh, one other question I have for you. So, and uh, I spoke to Larry yesterday. He was he alluded to this, and I wasn't aware of it. So, I guess is it true that the CPSC board is at full staff for the first time uh, in many years? I, I think that is that is accurate with the latest. Uh, with the latest election. So NFA is at full steam and moving ahead on this and many other issues. Okay. And uh, we certainly appreciate you bringing attention to this issue and letting your listeners know about it. Okay. Hey, and we appreciate you, you taking the time to give us a call. We really appreciate it. Anything else that you can think of that we didn't ask you that, uh, that maybe we should let the people know? Um, no, uh, you know, I'll just say it again. Uh, just plug hashtag, that's the pound sign, hashtag Save Our Fireworks into Google. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be information on the National Firework Association's Facebook page. There's a change.org petition and more information online. Great. Uh, great. Thanks again so much. We appreciate it. Sounds great. Good. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.